right, let's do it. It's Monday evening. It's time for weather for Weather Geeks as we start a new work week. The weekend featured a big cool down, of course, with gusty winds on Saturday and then a pretty tranquil day on Sunday. We had another pretty calm day today with heavy frost in the morning, but actually pretty nice afternoon. Made it up into the upper 40s today with a good deal of sunshine. But that's the last of the sunshine, I think, for quite some time. We've got a pretty cloudy forecast ahead of us. Let's uh, soak in today's numbers first because, again, this was the, uh, the pick of the litter as far as our forecast this week goes. 49 this afternoon, 7 above the average. Of course, the record well out of reach at 71. Back in 2001, the record low, 1991, it was 9 degrees. All right, for all the talk uh, that you saw in this video and elsewhere of a cold December, the first five days have not been bad temperature-wise. Uh, we had a 53 on Friday. That 53 Saturday was, of course, just after midnight. And then 49, our high for today. We had a couple of below average days in the mix. We're going to add some orange boxes to this graphic in the near term. But I do think, and we'll talk about the longer range in this forecast video, uh, I do think the second half of December will be a whole different ball of wax. All right, so we had sunshine, especially this afternoon. We had some fair weather clouds this morning, but it turned fairly sunny for a lot of the afternoon today, that low early December sun angle evident out there. Now clouds are starting to uh, increase and the chances of rain will increase. It'll be kind of a tag team effort over the next uh, 24 hours as a uh, cold front out here approaches from the uh, west. Uh, area of low pressure off to our south, weak wave of low pressure comes to the north, and that will increase the moisture here as we go into the overnight tonight. So we'll be dry for the next handful of hours, but by 2, 3, 4 in the morning, a little bit of rain, and most importantly for those heading off to work and school Tuesday morning, grab the wet weather gear. This is going to be nothing heavy, but a touch of rain and some drizzle will be around as Tuesday gets underway with another surge of uh, shallow moisture coming our way during the afternoon. So I think as we head off to work in the morning and when we go home in the afternoon, light rain is pretty likely in a lot of the area. Light rain again returns for Wednesday morning early and then the rest of the day pretty cloudy. And actually in the wake of this front, it's a weak front, uh, we'll get a little dry interval, I suspect, for a lot of Wednesday night and into Thursday before moisture returns from the south and west by Friday, giving us a good chance for some wet weather at the end of the week. So rain chances breaking down like this. Again, a little bit of a lull Wednesday night, Thursday. By Thursday night late and into Friday, showers becoming likely. And we're going to hang on to that chance for showers into the weekend. We had to uh, make the weekend forecast more pessimistic, to, pessimistic I should say, uh, today with some model trends depicting just a real sluggish pattern with a lot of clouds through the weekend. Now, I mentioned the uh, showers coming our way Friday. There's one model that would suggest that we might have to allow for a little wet snow in the mix. I normally would kind of discount it because it's one model and most models are not advertising this, but it's the European model, typically regarded as our our, our best, most accurate medium range model as far as long term averages. Of course, every model is going to have a good day and a bad day, but long term averages, you know, the European tends to be the king. And so because it is insisting that uh, maybe a little wet snow will try to mix in with rain Friday, especially later in the day and into Friday night, we're going to you know, talk about this, we're going to mention it, but I don't think it's likely at this point. And even if we do have some wet snowflakes, I don't think it will be all that impactful here locally. All right, so this is the six to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center today. So this covers the 11th through the 15th. I think this is just before a pretty significant pattern change across the lower 48 states. The cold that's been bottled up in the West and up in Western Canada, the dam is gonna break, I think, beyond this six to 10 day period. And we're gonna see increasing chances, I think, for some colder weather later in the month. This is a t today's run of uh, what we call the European weeklies. And what we're looking at here are seven day chunks, temperatures compared to the average. I'm gonna fast forward to right here. This is the 13th through the 20th. So again, you're starting to see the blue coming east and then here's the chunk the week before Christmas. So this is from the 18th through Christmas Eve. And yeah, you get the idea here. Uh, all the blue that's been kind of bottled up in the West comes east. Um, and while well, this is just one set of modeling, there is pretty decent model agreements across our medium range models that this general idea is probably right, that the second half of December will be pr uh, pr uh, definitely cooler, uh, uh, definite uh, pattern change in the, uh, in the works. Now, how cold compared to the average? Will this come with wintry precipitation opportunities? I do think that uh, the second half of December will likely be uh, a few degrees cooler than average for that two week period after the first half of the month might end up being a degree or two above average. Uh, uh, as far as 
precipitation with this. I do think we'll have some chances. Does it look really, really active second half of the month? I'm not seeing that right now. But, uh, you know, with this kind of a uh, cold air mass coming east, you're just going to need one or two systems to uh, bring some moisture north and tap into that colder air to, uh, you know, bring out some, some wintry precipitation in the lead up to Christmas. Also today, uh, today is the fifth of the month, so we got to look at the new seasonal guidance from the European Center. Uh, this is in one month chunks, and this is December. And no surprise here is we're into December now. Uh, the, the way the map looks is not that surprising. You're going to see cold anomalies making inroads across the, the lower Great Lakes and Ohio Valley as we head deeper into the month, and the month will probably come out in the wash as somewhat cooler than average here locally, despite the relatively mild start through the first 10 days to two weeks. Now let's fast forward to January. All right, so if you've you know followed my videos for a while, when I talk about these you know monthly outlooks from the European Center, month one, it tends to do really well. Month two... And beyond, because you know we can look all the way through next summer <laughs> with these uh, monthly outlooks. But we're going to focus on the on the near term. Starting month two, you have to take what it says with a grain of salt, and you have to once you've looked at these maps enough, you have to you can kind of extrapolate a little bit as to what the model might be actually seeing. Maybe not displaying graphically, but actually internally seeing. Uh, what I mean by all this is the model has a harder time seeing and displaying graphically cold weather for month two and beyond. It does okay in month one. Month two and beyond, you just never really see much blue. Um, but what you can extrapolate, I think, a little bit uh, from the graphical output here, anytime you see the real pale yellows and certainly the neutral colors, those are all zones that you could probably place pretty decent odds on it being near to cooler than average for that month. So you don't see a lot of blue, but you can probably paint in some blue anywhere where neutral is shown, anywhere even where you have that palest shade of yellow. When you get into the darker oranges, then uh, you know odds are certainly going to favor more warmer than average temperatures in in those zones. But once you get towards the edges of all the oranges and yellows, then you know you can start talking about uh, maybe the model is actually uh, seeing, if you will, um, colder air. So all that being said, its January outlook would suggest that kind of east of the Mississippi, especially, uh, we might have some pretty good thaws in store for the month of January. Now, I kind of suspect around here, we're going to be in a real battle zone. There could be some wild swings as we get into midwinter. Some pretty good thaws, maybe uh, occasionally some uh, some real cold blasts as well. Now, that's not that unusual for the middle of winter, but maybe a little bit more of a back and forth January compared to last January, which was pretty consistently cold, especially during the second half of the month. This year might be a little more variable. Now, today's only December 5th. We're talking about January here, but hey, this is weather for weather geeks. We can geek out to this stuff. Um, interesting, I'll show you this real quick. Uh, the month-to-month -month comparison, um, let's compare, uh, can I show you this? Let's uh, do this. This is a comparison, the last two runs of this modeling for the month of January. Over here is the, the run from November, early November, that was issued around the 5th. And then here's the current run. You can see the oranges have actually gotten a little bit uh, more pronounced meaning that the model is seeing warmer trends as uh, we go into into January and perhaps colder trends in the Pacific Northwest and across uh, the US Canadian border and up into Western Canada. So all that by way of saying, you know, I think I still think that December might have the best odds overall of the three winter months as being a colder than average month. We're going to have some wintry weather, we're going to have some cold weather of course later in the winter, but it may be much more of a back and forth proposition than December, especially the second half of December. I think we could have a stretch ahead of us during the second half of December this year that will kind of have, have a similar flavor to the second half of January last winter. We were below freezing for like 10 straight days. We had snow on the ground for two straight weeks or something like that. Uh, we might have something kind of like that earlier in the season this year before the end of the year. All right, I babbled long enough on weather for Weather Geeks this evening. Thanks for hanging with me all the way through this video. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.